Hey everyone! Welcome to my channel, and thank you for joining me for this video about nuclear-powered cars. Nuclear power has been used in many applications over the years, but have you ever thought what it would be like to have a car powered by nuclear energy? In this video, I'm going to explore the possibilities of nuclear-powered cars and discuss the potential advantages and limitations. So let's get started. The nuclear car is a new technology that could have a considerable impact on the transportation industry. Involving a nuclear reactor, the vehicle runs on electricity, making it an extremely efficient and environmentally friendly form of transportation. Eventually, this will lead to the gradual elimination of fossil fuels, which will change our way of life. While the nuclear car was not initially intended to be used as mass transportation, many scientists, engineers, and enthusiasts have tried to develop an efficient and feasible way to power these cars using atomic energy. The idea of nuclear-powered cars has been around for decades, with notable concept cars such as the Audi, Bisarthum, Ford, Nuclean, and Cadillac World Thorium being proposed in the past. These cars were intended to be powered by nuclear energy, rather than traditional fossil fuels, and promised to be more efficient, eco-friendly, and have a longer lifespan. If you liked this video, a subscribe or a like would mean the world, as it helps me keep making more content like this to share with you all. January 15, 2009, the Top Gear website published an article with the title, Cadillac Word Thorium Fuel Concept News. We understand why people get excited when they see a futuristic design, but this one is improbable to be feasible. Let's find out why. This ambitious and imaginative proposal is based on a nuclear powertrain and is designed to last 100 years without maintenance, according to designer Lauren Kulsis. While the idea of a car that is built to last forever and is powered by a sustainable energy source is very appealing, there are several reasons to be skeptical of the feasibility of this concept. First, it is important to know that Kulesis is a designer, not an engineer or physicist, so it is unclear whether he has the necessary experience to design and build a functional nuclear-powered vehicle on his own. Lauren Kulesis does not describe how the vehicle's thorium reactor would work, what kind of maintenance would be required, or how a subcritical reaction would last 100 years without being interrupted. Another issue with the Cadillac World Thorium concept is that thorium is not a particularly practical fuel for a small nuclear reactor. While thorium is more abundant than uranium and plutonium, it is not fissile, meaning it cannot sustain a nuclear chain reaction. Instead, thorium would need to be converted into fissile material, such as uranium-233, to be used as fuel. This process is technically challenging and has not yet been demonstrated on a large scale. Furthermore, the claims made by Kulesis about the safety of the thorium reactor are somewhat dubious. While it is true that thorium does pose a lower risk of proliferation than other nuclear fuels, it is still possible for a thorium reactor to be used to produce weapons-grade materials if it is not properly safeguarded. The idea that the reactor would be able to withstand all unauthorized or accidental tampering seems too optimistic given the complexity and sensitivity of nuclear power systems. While the Cadillac World Thorium may be an interesting and imaginative design study, it is not a practical or viable solution for the future of transportation. There are simply too many technical and logistical challenges associated with building and operating this nuclear vehicle and the claims made by Kulesis about the feasibility and safety are not supported by the evidence. Moreover, it is unlikely that any business would be able to profitably build a car that never breaks and lasts for 100 years. The upfront costs to develop such a vehicle are likely to be substantial, and the market for such a product would likely be limited. Such a vehicle would require regular inspections, part replacements, and maintenance over its lifetime, which would add to the cost. Finally, there is a risk that newer, more cost-efficient cars would make this vehicle obsolete before the end of its 100-year life cycle. The Cadillac World Thorium concept is believed to have been inspired by Ford Nuclean. Both vehicles feature a futuristic design and are powered by a nuclear powertrain with a very similar cooling system visible in the back engine compartment of both cars. The Cadillac World Thorium has been described as nothing more than a design study. 
In 2011, a company named Laser Power Systems announced plans to release a prototype of a nuclear-powered car within two years. The company, based in Connecticut, was working on a new propulsion method using thorium. According to the CEO of Laser Power Systems, Charles Stevens, just one gram of thorium can produce more energy than 28,000 liters of gasoline. The company proposed using small pieces of thorium to create heat, which would then be harnessed to create a thorium laser, which in turn heats water to produce steam and power, a series of mini turbines. The engine was estimated to weigh around 227 kilograms, making it compact and lightweight enough to fit under the hood of a conventional car. Stevens acknowledged that the development of such technology is not simple, as creating usable and portable turbines and generators is much more challenging than developing thorium lasers. He and his team of 40 employees were working to find a solution to this problem. If they were successful, Charles Stevens claimed that thorium-powered cars would be able to run for a million miles without the need for refueling and emitting pollutants. The concept of thorium-powered cars is not new and has been explored in the past, such as in 2009, when Lauren Kulesis proposed the Cadillac World Thorium Fuel concept. But Charles Stevens later stated that thorium-powered cars would not be available soon. Car manufacturers are not interested in making them, and the company's focus has shifted to other areas. Charles Stevens believes that it will take at least a couple of decades for thorium technology to be used enough in other industries that vehicle manufacturers will begin to consider it. He also believes that a thorium turbine about the size of an air conditioning unit could provide cheap power for whole restaurants, hotels, office buildings, and even small towns in areas of the world without electricity. At some point, thorium could power individual homes as well. It's worth noting that thorium is radioactive, he said, because the radiation that comes from the thorium turbine can be shielded by a single sheet of aluminum foil, and the amount of radiation emitted is less than that of a dental x-ray. In July 2016, a nuclear-powered car concept created by Grigory Gorin for Audi went online. While it didn't receive as much attention as the Cadillac World Thorium, it is worth mentioning because it appears to be more technically detailed. The car is called the Masarthim F Tron Quattro. This is an electric car powered by a fusion reactor. It has a complex system in which a nuclear reactor and plasma injectors are located in the center of the car. A steam generator next to the reactor uses the heat to spin a turbine connected to a generator, which charges batteries in the front and on the sides of the car. These batteries then power the electric motors in the wheel hubs. The car also has a system called KERS, which uses flywheels to facilitate acceleration and feed the plasma injectors and reservoirs to store used steam for a new cycle. The car's chassis is made from 3D printed lightweight steel and has a collapsible design with replaceable parts. It also has a system called MHDS that uses a liquid with magnetic properties to create additional downforce and interact with an electromagnetic roadbed. The Audi Masartham is an interesting concept car that envisions a future where vehicles are powered by nuclear energy. These types of cars have been the subject of fascination for many due to the potential of nuclear energy to provide vast amounts of power from a small amount of fuel. The main reason that Audi Masartham is not yet feasible is that nuclear fusion, the process that would be used to generate energy for this vehicle, is not yet fully developed. While nuclear fusion has the potential to provide a limitless source of clean energy, it is a complex and difficult process to control. Researchers and scientists are still working to develop a practical and safe way to use the power of nuclear fusion, and it will likely be many years before this technology is ready for use in the automotive industry. The story of nuclear-powered cars is filled with human creativity and innovation. To better understand this history, we need to go back to the first attempt to use nuclear energy to power a car. In 1958, Ford tried to make a drastic change in the automotive industry by creating the Nuclean. This car was intended to be powered by a serviceable small nuclear reactor, coupled with several components for energy conversion, such as an electronic torque converter. Although the vehicle was decked with ambitious features, it went unrealized due to technical issues related to the period. 
The constraint that prevented the project from transpiring was the difficulty of translating the nuclear reactor's thermal energy into mechanical energy. Achieving such a task necessitated numerous transformations, ranging from thermal to mechanical, electric, and then back to mechanical capability, which in turn created even more inefficiencies and made the concept unfeasible economically. The main challenge associated with utilizing a nuclear reactor for powering such a vehicle lies not in the reactor itself, but rather in the added components necessary for energy conversion and disposal of the waste heat. Whereas combustion engines typically expel their heat in the form of exhaust gas, a nuclear reactor has no such outlet, and so must dispose of the produced heat through one or more radiators. This presents a challenging engineering problem in terms of designing components to fit within the small envelope of the vehicle, and even with advancing nuclear reactor technology, mobile nuclear power on small scales, such as those required of car manufacturers, remains a low chance. While advances in reactor technology have been made, this mode of power is still not feasible, especially on a large scale. Despite this, the nuclear remains an iconic concept of its time, representing Ford's ambition and desire to bring atomic energy transportation to the masses. Ford Nucleon was proposed as a concept car, as a symbol of the potential of nuclear energy. The safety concerns around nuclear-powered cars must be approached and resolved before they can be considered a viable option. Nuclear energy has the potential to be extremely dangerous if not handled properly. Having a nuclear reactor on board, a vehicle raises serious concerns about the safety of the people inside the car and those around it. There would need to be rigorous safety protocols in place to ensure that these types of vehicles could be used without risk to the public. Besides the technical and safety challenges, there are also regulatory issues that would need to be reviewed before nuclear-powered cars could be put into possible use. Governments around the world have strict regulations in place regarding the use of nuclear energy, and there would likely be substantial hurdles to overcome before nuclear-powered cars could be approved for use on public roads. However, despite their intriguing concept, the reality is that these types of vehicles are not yet achievable. The Audi Masarthum, Ford, Nucleon, and Cadillac World Thorium are examples of concept cars, as they were never produced, only presented as an idea. That concludes my tour through the fascinating history of concepts around nuclear-powered cars. I hope you enjoyed learning about these futuristic concepts as much as I enjoyed researching and sharing them. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to stay up to date every time I post. I always love reading your thoughts too, so make sure to leave me a comment down below sharing your opinions. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.